Diagnostic systems are key components to providing solutions for automation tasks. They serve to quickly identify and locate faults and malfunctions in machinery and systems, and of course, promptly indicate and report such conditions to the appropriate personnel. We've had integrated system diagnostics as part of Totally Integrated Automation Portal right from the start. These diagnostics report any faults arising in automation systems, such as broken wires or cables, and the related failure of load current supply. ProDiag, a machinery and systems diagnostic system, has been newly added on the TIA portal. ProDiag diagnostics faults detected directly in the given process. We'd now like to show you what this system looks like and how it works using our small demonstration system as an example. This is our demo unit. You can see here how individual subprocessors are all functioning smoothly and correctly. I'll now simulate a fault by manipulating an input. I've now manipulated an input, and as you can see, an overview display already indicates that something is wrong in this particular subset of my bottling process. I change from my overview display to a detailed view of the bottling system. An alarm is already displayed here at the top of the screen, as well as via ProDiag, indicating that an error has occurred, meaning that an error has been reported. So now I need more information. When I click open the alarm indication, the report displayed here shows directly what operand is faulty and how and why an error has occurred. Normally, I'd have to call a service technician now who would use testing equipment to inspect the system on site along with other detailed diagnostics. Because at that moment, all I know is that the bottling process was unable to continue because, well, I don't know why. So I open my PLC code viewer to learn more. Here, I get a clear display showing precisely why the release for onward bottling has not been given, namely, because an upstream interlock condition has not been met. In this case, the release has simply not been given or the alarm report has been received that inadequate pressure for filling operations is available. I can now quickly go to the relevant on-site location and see what the issue is. Yet, how did I manage to implement this in TIA portal? I've already called up the overview module and my function block 11. That's my module for the bottling process. This function module is responsible for ensuring that the bottles are correctly filled. And you can see here, as well as the marking interlock fill process, that's my operand parameter that I monitor for interlocking purposes. It's my release signal. And why was that process not released? Because of an upstream interlock condition had not been met. Here, for example, the bottles are not in the correct position. Or, as in our case, there is simply not enough pressure available to fill the bottles. Of course, I also have to monitor whether adequate material is in my tank. How did I engineer this interlock monitoring? In my function block 11, direct in the parameter bar of the function module. It's important to note that it's not the module itself, but the module's parameter bar. The advantage is this. No impact can be achieved if, for example, I use protected modules or safety modules to implement process diagnostics. One very important advantage, however, is this. Changes in the program code of my function module have no impact on my process diagnostics. So how did I engineer this interlock monitoring? Select the module operand, new supervision, for example, a new monitoring function, a dialog box is directly displayed in which I now select the appropriate type of monitoring. There are operand supervision parameters, such as static variables that have to be constantly evaluated over the entire process. Then, as in our case, there are interlock monitoring functions which I use to supervise release signals. Or there are response monitoring functions. Has the process been correctly completed? Another type is an action monitoring function. Is the action taken place? In the case of slow, longer-term actions, such as when filling a silo, 
where I am reliably informed if the filling process does indeed fail to function. Another type is a position monitoring function. Has the object moved without any action being initiated at all? In our case, we opted for an interlock monitoring function. So precisely in those cases, when the interlock is not fulfilled, I also need supplementary conditions. And this must be very precise, for it can only display the alarm if, for example, this process step is active. In this case, this means that the bottle movement has to be shut down. Another example is the second monitoring function, which can be based on interlock monitoring. If the bottle movement is to be restarted, last but not least, I of course also need interlock monitoring of my release process in case the signal fill bottle is actuated. This is important because I then monitor the process only when the filling process has really been actuated. Otherwise, I don't. Yes, that is actually all I needed to do to engineer an operand monitoring function. The system also directly offers me the corresponding appropriate alarm text automatically. Or I can even go to the central alarm control center if I don't want to simply re-enter my same alarm text, rather expand it. For example, if I now wish to relocate my CPU name in the second position in my alarm report text, I can do this with a drag and drop. Another advantage is that all various foreign languages are also available to me. Those are all aspects having to do with the controller side of the system. But what do I have to do with respect to my human-machine interface? There, it's even simpler. I select the appropriate display view I want and simply drag existing ActiveX controls directly onto my display from my toolbox at the right. For example, here is my PLC code viewer. All I need to do is pull it over by drag and drop, adjust the size, and the system does the rest of it for me automatically. Or, for example, the overview reports from ProDiag. Simply move them into the display by drag and drop and link them to the appropriate instance. That is done here, of course, as well using IntelliSense, specifically with Instance Database. Simply download it and you're all set. It doesn't get any simpler than that. The system generates all relevant controller modules for me automatically and also ensures that my operating equipment, all my operating devices, are always in line with the runtime. That's how easy generating process diagnostics can be. But now back to our machinery. I now eliminate the fault by simply resetting the signal that the pressure in my bottling system is in order again. It is displayed directly on my operating device that everything is in perfect working order. And you also see that the process has restarted. ProDiag Process and Machinery Diagnostics integrated directly into the TA portal, directly in the editor. Non-interactive because changes have no impact on my process diagnostics and always up to date. And that means even when changes are introduced, the operating devices no longer have to be brought in line as well. Rather, they synchronize themselves during the normal runtime. That's integrated engineering with the TIA portal.